everybody. A bit of a weird introduction from me today. I just wanted everyone to appreciate my handmade studio. So we've got a big signed Lucy Quinn shirt, a little signed Island shirt that's been signed by Louise, Jamie, Lucy, Lily and Rusha Little John, everybody. So I hope you all like my little studio today. We've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. Our episode today is called... I can't slay to you if I'm honest. So big talking point today. This is why this week's episode has been so delayed. There's been a lot of things going on. Um, I was also away being an international girl with my lovely flag up there, which you'll see later on. Um, I was away in Dublin supporting England and Ireland, hence the handmade studio behind me. I'm not a fan of half and half scarves, but it had to be done. I even made a half and half flag, which Louise Quinn absolutely loved. Anyway, let's get straight into it. Today's topic of conversation is a little bit obvious. We don't have a manager. Big Bad Carter, after a few years involved with us, I think he's been with us since 2021, is no more. He was in charge of a total of 67 games for us. 12 of those were in the WSL, 41 of those in the Championship, 6 in the Conti Cup and 8 in the FA Cup. We were relegated from the WSL with only 11 points when we were last there which I think was the 2021-2022 season. We were really unfortunate that year. So we started off with Carla Ward, who snaked us and went to the rivals, Aston Villa. Um, then we had Scott Booth take over, who was sacked. And then we had Tony Elliott, who was an interim manager. And then Darren Carter took over on the 21st of November 2021 when we were still in the WSL. So he had 12 games in charge in the WSL, which is just over half of the season. Um, we finished that season on 11 points, so we were relegated. Next in line was Leicester. We were only two points away from Leicester, so one win could have made all the difference in that league then. So... I'm not blaming anyone. We had a really unfortunate season that year, if I'm honest. <laughs> if I'm honest, if I'm honest, if I'm honest. If you say that three times in the bathroom mirror, I will appear. I won't really. That's too much hard work. Anyway, back to Darren Carter. So, last season, well, actually, overall, in his 67 games... He had a 52% win rate, so it's not the best, but it's also not the worst. So out of 67 games, while he was in charge, Blues 135. Now, this is where I think the beef is. 52% win rate, it's not that bad, but it's the loss rate, 39%. That's nearly half as well, that's like just off 40%, so 35 wins, but 26 losses. That's a lot of points to be dropping and to be giving away, so from that, other teams have taken three points there. We only had six draws. So this is where the issues are, isn't it, really? If those 26 losses hadn't have been losses, let's, for instance, last year, if we, we'd have drawn instead of lost one of those games we would be in the WSL this season we lost out last year by one point one point which is emotional so 2022 to 2023 season obviously we played 22 games each season 15 wins two draws and five losses that's seven games where we drop points there Again, as I just said, it wouldn't be bad, but five losses is a lot of points to be dropping. That's 15 points gone. If we'd have drawn those five games, we would have had an extra five points and we would have been promoted. Do you get my issue? 
So that said, this season it's already worse. I feel like I spoke about Darren Carter last week about my questioning of his whatever it is. But this season he had 19 games in the championship. We won 10 of those, drawn three and lost six. So this is my beef. We're losing six. That's a lot of points. That's 18 points going to other teams. So yeah, 10 wins, three draws, six losses, a lot of dropped points. I feel like, no offence to him, this should have happened a lot sooner. We've lost too many silly points now. So obviously last week was horrendous, Charlton. Not last week, the week before. The week before that, whatever happened, happened. Draw into Blackburn Rovers, it's just, it's not good enough, is it? Um... So yeah, 52% win rate. That's not my beef. My beef is the 39% loss rate. So hopefully then with our new manager, we might be able to do something better next year. So who is this you are wondering? This is Amy Merricks. Amy Merricks previously was at Brighton, Hove and Albion since 2015. She was there for eight years, did a few different roles while she was there. Um, she left there in April last year to be the England under-19 Lionesses head coach. Didn't stay there too long, not sure what happened with that. She stayed there until November 2023. And now... We are rumoured to be getting Amy Merricks. So I think this is potentially a good a good thing. There's a few people that could have had the role. But the reason why Amy Merricks will work so well here, obviously, is because she was under Hope Powell for five years. So in her eight years at Brighton, she did a few different things. Assistant manager was one of them. Um, she was interim manager at some point multiple occasions actually but also from 2018 Emily Simpkins signed for Brighton who is our assistant coach so yeah that was I think she had a four or five years there so both Emily and Amy have worked very very closely with Hope Powell who now works at Birmingham so the three of those together is you know it's going to be an interesting combination I've got faith in them up the girls and all that when Amy had her interim manager roles the first stint was for 58 days and the second stint was for 32 days she didn't do too bad considering the games she had during those stints so the first one um so from the 31st of October 2022 to the 28th of December the same year which was 58 days um, Brighton had four games. She won two, drew one, lost one. Um, but they were against... So they had West Ham. They won that one. They played Liverpool, drew that one. London City Lionesses, they won. And then Man City, they lost. It was 3-1 though, so it's not even like they got thrashed. And then the second stint she had was the 6th of March 2023 to the 7th of April 2023. Only a 32-day stint that time. Uh, but they had five games in that time. This one's a little bit different. Um, games were a lot harder. So Chelsea away, they lost. Man City at home, they lost, but it was only 2-1. And then they beat Blues away 2-0 in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. Then they drew to Reading away and then they lost at home 4-0 to Man United so quite a hard game she had while she was actually in control so can't really judge her on those but yeah as I said she's worked with Brighton since 2015 Brighton are now in the WSL in April last year from April to no November 2023 Amy Merricks was hired as the under 19s Lionesses head coach um I did some research and I found during that time she actually did some work with Sussex County FA and there was quite a lot of positive feedback about that. So she did a um, masterclass for them. Continuous Professional Development Masterclass. 
and her focus in this masterclass was on finishing in the final third this is something i really really think we lack so remember last week i think it was we went through some of the statistics of expected goals and we just weren't getting that many goals so we're having a lot of shots but we can't finish in the final third so if this is something she's clued up on we might be all right so i'm really curious to see how we get on if we do sign amy merricks um i think her working with emily simpkins and hope powell would be actually all right so my fingers are crossed i feel like it might be like the holy trinity amy emily and hope you've heard it here first boys right on to our final talking point for today this one is a long beefy one obviously we've had no domestic women's football for um, a few weeks because of international duties we had nine players out on international duty i got confused last week and said that ellie mason was with northern ireland she's not i lied i was supposed to say that christy harrison murray's with scotland we all make mistakes hey so nine players we had out obviously we had louise lucy and lily with ireland christy with scotland cho and yuri with south korea rebecca holloway at northern ireland and then neve heron and lucy thomas with the under 23s interesting statistics for what happened with all these international matches so let's start with ireland because you know out of the three players two of them played in both games one of them didn't get any game time at all so louise took part in both the France and England game, played 90 minutes in both. Honestly, she was great in both games. I can't fault Louise. Honestly, such a grafter. I'd be really sad if we didn't have Louise in our team. Um, they lost, Ireland lost to France. It was only 1-0, which is, it's a really good result, if you ask me. And then they lost to England 2-0, which was really unfortunate. Ireland really deserved a goal. International boys. So then Lucy had 18 minutes against France and then Lucy started against England, had 60 minutes there, was replaced by Megan Campbell with the long throw-ins. If you know, you know. If you don't, are you okay? No game time for Lily, unfortunately. So next we'll talk about Christy Harrison-Murray. Scotland played Serbia and Slovakia. They drew 0-0 against Serbia. Christy played 14 minutes and then Scotland won against Slovakia, but Christy was on the bench, no minutes there. So overall, 14 minutes for Christy. South Korea, these are exciting stats. I've absolutely loved watching our little South Koreans, Cho and Yuri. I think they're both unreal. Strangely, though, Cho has, is unreal for us. Unreal. But... Um, they didn't really utilise her. I'm not sure whether they were just resting her because they felt like they didn't need her. So South Korea played the Philippines twice. Not sure what is going on over in that side of the world. I'm not clued up on the leagues, um, the international stuff. Cho played 90 minutes in the 3-0 win. And Yuri played 45 and she scored one goal. Um, so overall, 3-0 win. Both of our players had good impact there. And then South Korea played the Philippines again. It was a 2-1 win for South Korea. If the statistics I'm reading are right, Cho played five minutes of that game. Bit strange. Um, but Yuri played 90 and she got one goal and one assist. So those two did really well away on international duty. Hopefully they're not too tired this weekend because we need them. Um, but it's strange because obviously Cho plays a lot now. Cho gets stuck in defence because of our lack of squad depth. And Yuri doesn't really get much, for use of better phrase. On to Northern Ireland then. We had Rebecca Holloway away at Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland had Malta, which was a nil-nil draw. And then they played Bosnia and Herzegovina. Herze I don't know how you say that. Her Herzegovina. Um, and that was a 3-1 win. Unfortunately, Bex remained on the bench for both of those games. Doesn't make sense to me because she's brilliant. Then we move to our under-23s. 
they only had one game which was against Sweden and that was a 3-1 win for the young Lionesses there. Neve was on the bench but Lucy Thomas got the start, played the full game. So four out of nine of the international players that were out were benched. Five of them played but four were benched. Which is strange. Anyway, my beef this week is the under 23s so now Lucy Thomas is 24. Her birthday wasn't that long ago, um, but now she's 24. This is where my beef is. So if you follow women's football, you'll know that um, Kiara Keating, the Lioness's third choice goalkeeper, um, plays for Man City, is injured. So instead they called up Kayla Rendell, who plays for Southampton. She's 22, right? Southampton are third in the league. We're fifth. This isn't where my beef is. Kayla Rendell has had four clean sheets this season. Four. Lucy's had eight, I believe. Double. So if you look at the table for clean sheets in our league, Lucy is second out of 15 goalkeepers. Kayla Rendell is ninth. I'm not sure... What Serena was doing, if it was Serena's choice, I do believe that they've probably been watching Lucy Thomas and we're not going to talk about the most recent mistakes because they were definitely on another level. Maybe if she hadn't have made those mistakes, she would have been the one that was called up to train with Mary and Hannah. Um, it's really unfortunate because I feel like that would have been very valuable for Lucy it's a shame, really, especially because Lucy's 24. So she can't carry on playing in the under 23s after this year, I think. I think when I'm sh I can't, I don't know how it works, but I'm sure after this season, she can't play with them anymore. Don't know how that works, but. So I'm not sure what's next for Lucy Thomas, if I'm honest. She's just going to end up falling into a pit of English goalkeepers that don't do anything. Uh, like Sandy McIver, she recently switched allegiances to Scotland because she wasn't getting picked for England. She started in the Scottish match, I think it was the recent one against Serbia, had to come off after nine minutes and it's now been announced that she did her ACL, so she is unusable. Yeah, so it's a shame. But, yeah, as I said, we were away in Dublin being international queens. This was the gang that I was with. So we've got Kian, Mia, Reese, Polly, Charlie and myself. Lovely little group. Had a lovely time. Um, We went to support, well, obviously they were supporting England. Polly was supporting Ireland. And... I'm not going to lie to you, I was supporting both if I'm honest. I didn't celebrate when they scored or anything. I got myself a little half and half scarf to match my, where is it, half and half flag. If you can see that. That was us in the Aviva with our lovely, <laughs> lovely flag. Louise loved the flag. So yeah. Um, without further ado, I think maybe we'll do a little analysis. <laughs> maybe we'll do a little analysis of the England and Ireland game because I was there, and we can talk about that. And I'll tell you all about Louise Quinn because she's bloody brilliant. So this was England's first goal. So in this game, Ireland ran with five four one. They obviously knew they would have to do a lot of defending. That said, the second half. I'll see if I can find some clips of that. They were so much better. They were more attacking. Big Lou Quinn went from being a centre-back to actually being a striker. And do you know what? I'm really sad she didn't get a goal because she actually deserved one. She grafted really hard. So you can see here, left Katie McCabe. Villas, Anna Patton, big Louise in the middle. Then you've got Hayes and Mannion on the other side over next to Lauren Hemp and Kira Walsh. It's a shame because... I don't want to sound like a generic Blues fan, but I feel like the reason this goal was conceded is because of 
the Villa player. Worth mentioning that these were Patton's first two games as an Ireland player. Um, not sure how this came about, but she came to the Irish side and got two starts for her first two games. Honestly, before I even knew who it was, because I didn't recognise her, because we were a bit far away, I were complaining about her the whole match. So, obviously I'm Irish and English, so I wasn't celebrating or anything. I was being really good. But, Lord, when I realised it was her, I was like, that makes sense. So, yeah, she wasn't very good. If it was me, I would have put Megan Campbell on there instead. Because... We've all seen that throw-in. Holy Lord. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, but anyway, this is England's first goal. You can see here kind of the, the, the defence is on their players. Anna Patton just literally leaves her man. Watch. And it's a lovely ball in from Kira Walsh. Patton's nowhere near her man. It actually come off her as well. Which just makes it better. She gave it straight to Lauren James on a plate. She gave it to her. It's a shame because the goals they got completely avoidable. I know the second one was a penalty, but um, let's watch it again in slow motion. It's not even slow motion. But see again, Patton is nowhere near Lauren James. She actually just gives the ball to her. Goalkeeper could have saved it, to be honest, but, you know. Yeah, I'm blaming Patton for that one. So this was how the first penalty came about, because they actually got awarded two. I've not seen the second one yet. I knew the first one was handball. Um, this was Rusha Littlejohn. She jumps up to deflect the ball, and it just hits her on the arm. She's unfortunate, to be honest. Big header from McCabe. Comes down to Jess Park. Jess Park volleys it straight into Rusha's arm. And they get the penalty. Which I hate to break it to you, but they score. Um, Felt a bit sorry for Rusha here. She got subbed off at half time. I'm not sure what she's screaming here. Uh. Oh, hello, Quinny. Oh. Anyway, Alex Greenwood scores this one. That was the second goal. There were no more goals after that, so we're in 18 minutes. So bear in mind, we've sat there for 70 minutes goalless. Actually, it was probably about eight and we've added time and stuff. But So this was the lead-up to the second penalty. I've not seen this back yet. I know it was Big Lou that conceded it, apparently. I have to say, not one of those England players had their hands up then. I don't know what happened. Louise isn't happy. <sighs> she missed it anyway <laughs> don't worry right we've got a rubbish view of this it's a rubbish angle so Ireland had a corner not long before half time there was a lot of appeals for handball here a lot so let me just take it back here um, <clears throat> and if you look at the island players around her one, two, three, three of them all calling for handball, which they've actually got a good view, to be honest. So, yeah, it does kind of look like it, doesn't it? But I don't have any of the angles of this. So it was this, uh, around the 60th minute that Lucy Quinn got removed from the pitch 
she got swapped with Megan Campbell and if you've not seen this video is your name Patrick Starr do you live in Bikini Bottom under a rock it's got about 10 million views last time I checked on Twitter she threw it a very 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 long way if you've not seen it where have you been that's ridiculous so my question with that is if you've got someone in your team that can do that why are they sat on the bench for 60 minutes if it was me personally i would be playing for throw-ins so she could do that over and over again um because you can't be offside from a throw-in can you so they could have just sat in the goal that was 38 meters and you best believe my jaw absolutely dropped to the floor when she did it. It was unreal. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Never. Unreal. And then it went viral on Twitter, as I just said. I think it's got about 10 million views now. And do you know what was wild? There was men in the comments being nice. It blew my mind. I think England made a poor choice of using Hannah Hampton. Not really sure what Serena's um, idea behind not using Mary Oates was. Hannah is very lucky that she didn't concede. So this again. So absolutely being menaces, pressing high. She's just not very good under pressure. Another another lovely throw in from Megan there. Oh, if it was me, I'd just do that over and over and over and over and over again. Right, now is when we get to talk about Big Louise, right? Big Louise, this is, I think it was from about this point, maybe a little bit before, that she decided that she was going to play as a striker. Obviously, it wasn't her that decided. That's not how it works. Um, I've seen them do this with her before. Um, and you know what? It's really, really effective. Obviously, Louise is about six foot, so she's going to provide some hassle for these defenders. But if you watch this free kick, I'm so, 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 I don't know how they didn't score. I'm really sad that it didn't go in. So Louise is here at the end on the far right. Just watch this free kick. Again, look who missed that. May I draw your attention to number 12, please? Number 12, the Aston Villa player. Oh, lovely run from Louise there. Lovely to keep it in. And the fact that the two of them missed it just honestly pains me so much. They really deserved a goal. Really deserved a goal. Big Lou just couldn't get ahead to that. Another one. Number 12 again, just causing beef. I don't know how she started and stayed on the pitch as long as what she was. I'm not seeing what everyone else is seeing. I know that number, number 5 was the one that headed that, but... It was so emotional. And it was so loud in the Aviva as well. This number five, Hayes, defender, had so many chances. Denise O'Sullivan. Oh, Quinny. Louise, sorry. Oh, I asked her what she would like to be called and she said Lou. I was really sad that Lou didn't get a goal because um, she put in such a shift on this. And I was really surprised... At the ratings at the end of this game. Because they only give Lou six or something. Oh, the most controversial bit hasn't even happened yet. Wait for it. This this is it. This is it. This is it. This is another emotional moment for me for Lou. Because obviously you've got Katie McCabe. And she's been an absolute house. As she normally is. Um pestering Hannah Hampton again let me just say that 
this would never have happened to Mary Earps, okay? Never. Hannah's wasting time. She's getting on Katie's nerves. Katie takes matters into her own hand. And, yeah. The fact that Katie McCabe couldn't just square it off to Lou, who's there, look. Look, look. Lou's waiting. You've got another one on the edge of the box there. Lovely. You've got Leanne Kiernan here, just waiting. Lou, just waiting. No, McCabe wants to shoot at Hannah Hampton from that close. Why? Look, Lou again, middle of the box, waiting for the ball, just past the ball. Look how much time she's got. Leanne's there. Louise is there. She's got time to pass to either one of these two people. My straight pass here, I don't know whether she would get around Alex there, but I would have tried Lou. Look, she's waiting for it. Lou's waiting for it and she didn't pass. That's all I've got to show you for that. So at the end of the game, lovely, 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 lovely big Lou came over to us. And she was living it up with our little flag. She's so cute. I've never met a cuter person. And I had to make sure, I said to her, I have a really important question. She was like, what? I said, what would you like us to call you? Because obviously her name's Quinn. Lucy's name is Quinn. We've got two Quins, so I wasn't sure what she wanted to be called, so we asked her, and she said Lou. So, everybody, this is Lou. She was ever so cute. It was nice that she came over to us. Something that really got on my nerves, though, we were stood talking to her, and then someone said, excuse me, after she was walking away. She was like, yeah, because Lou is so nice. If anyone knows, knows Lou, they'll know how nice she is. She was like, yeah, you okay? And then... The girl called her over, so Louise has gone over. We're still stood here at this point. She says, can you do me a favour, please? And Lou's like, uh, yeah, sure. So then she hands her this envelope. A scraggy bit of paper. Looks a bit like this, right? Looks exactly like this. Looks like that. A bit battered. She said, um, can you give this to one of the players, please? And Louise is like, yeah, sure, who? And she said, Kira. Lou was like, Kira? She said, Kira Walsh. And Lou went, the, the England player, Kira Walsh. And the girl's like, yeah. And she said, oh, um, I'm not sure I'm actually going to see her, but uh, yeah, okay. So then Lou walks off <laughs> with this girl's handwritten love letter to Kira Walsh. And it was the strangest thing I've ever seen. But yeah, anyway... Lou came straight over, had a little picky with us, holding our flag, which is really funny. This flag is huge. It's big. I can't hold it on my own. And then Lou just took it, and she was like, bam. And we were both like, okay, then, yeah. She doesn't need any help holding that. Um, but, yeah, Lou's a, Lou's a cutie. And there she is holding the lovely blues flag. So, yeah, as you can see from the flag... Shit on the villa and keep right on. <sighs> so all set for Sunday's game against Crystal Palace away. Um, we've had this fixture three times before. We've won twice. And the most recent one we did lose, which was the 3rd of September. Um, we were at home. We lost 2-1. Um, we were losing for... Well, they scored in the 79th minute and then again in the 90th. And then Big Lou, Big Lou Quinn, the striker, managed to get one back for us, um, closing that goal difference slightly. In all three matches, um, both teams have scored. So we had we lost 2-1 in September and then 16th of April last year. We won 4-2 away. And then 22nd of March last year, we won 3-1 at home. It's it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because obviously we've got everything going on with Carter. So we'll have Emily Simpkins in charge this Sunday, I believe. I really like Emily. She's a good lass. She is. So we'll see what happens. Our form's not too great. But last five, we've both won three, lost two. So let's see what happens. And 
I'm sure we're going to have a lot to talk about next week. Um, on Friday this week, I will be attending the training event, which will be fun. Um, so I will keep you updated on how that goes. Fingers crossed. Do you know what? There's no even point crossing my fingers because we need Sunderland to lose, Crystal Palace to lose, Southampton to lose and Charlton to lose. Stranger things have happened. There's three games left. I'm pretty sure that it's done now. But fingers crossed if we do get Amy Merricks and that rumour is true that um, her and Emily and Hope can sort us out and hopefully we won't be in the championship next season but big shout out to darren carter for all his hard work shout out to lou big lou quinn we love you lou i've been shanny c and get back to the pitching <laughs>